Mas Philipson is the chair, was the chair of the Council of Economic Advisers under President Trump, now Professor of Public Policy at the University of Chicago. Um, look, it's easy to dismiss the Fitch decision on the basis of timing and the US economy is doing pretty better and this, that and the other and the recovery. But the, the core underlying points that they are making are strong ones about governance and the inability for uh, uh, or the dysfunction that exists. Yeah, I think there's two parts to this. One is the political point they're making, which is sort of a divided government downgrade of the debt in some sense. And on cue, uh, Republicans and Democrats are not blaming each other for the downgrade, essentially. The second part is the economics, which I think is not so strange as some people on the left want to argue, because COVID, we had the largest deficit in a post-war war period. That was followed by Biden, which has the two largest non-crisis deficits since then, meaning we had larger deficits in the financial crisis and in the first year of COVID, but then we got two massive deficits on top of that through the Biden administration. That has escalated, obviously, debt servicing costs. So think of your car loan, you have a, a big loan you have, but also the interest rates. Interest rates have gone up, the debt level has gone up, therefore interest rate servicing costs have exponentially grown. And I think that's the underlying issue here, essentially that interest costs are now about 14% but if I of tax, read, re of tax if, revenue. If I read what they say about in the Fitch statement, there's been an erosion of deterioration standards of government, Politi repeated debt limit political standoffs, last minute resolutions have eroded confidence in fiscal management. The government lacks a medium term fiscal framework, complex budgeting procedures, blah, blah, blah. I mean, we can go backwards and forwards and nitpick, but I guess the downgrade is that sort of gut feeling that there's something wrong and there isn't the will to put it right. And that goes to both sides of the political spectrum. Yeah, I would have to agree. Both sides are shying away from doing anything with entitlement, Social Security and uh, uh, Medicare, which is the driver of the spending level. And I think both sides are basically locked in in a way that doesn't make decision making very uh, productive in some sense. But the real issue here is not the rating agencies. It's what the markets think about the default risk. And markets are not necessarily paying attention to this as much as they did in 2011 when S&P downgraded. We saw Black Monday then with a 7% drop in the indices directly after the downgrade. We don't, we're not seeing nearly as much of that today. And they, today, in fact, the main uh, reduction in prices in the markets came after the, uh, the favorable uh, private jobs report, which makes people worried about the Fed keeping uh, rates high. Is there a real danger that on the biggest issue of all, how left and right work together. Look, you know, I, I look around the world and I see political divide everywhere. But in most countries, eventually it sort of sorts itself out. And uh, here it doesn't. Here, it, ev each side will take it to going over the cliff before they will finally pull themselves back. And that is slightly different. Would you agree? I don't know if it's true because uh, both in 2011 and in May, and I wrote about this in the Wall Street Journal op-ed, there was a lot of default risk on the markets, but eventually they did not default, obviously. So the question is, you know, it's all this sort of positioning that's taking place around the debt limit many times. Is that really an issue or do everyone understand, which the markets seem to understand, that there wouldn't be really a default? So I think there's some sort of a grabbing for bargaining positions that, ar that arises around these negotiations. But ultimately, in both cases, and I think in the future, they will right. come to terms uh, in time. Good to have you, sir. Very grateful. Keep, keep hope all's well Thank in you. Miami. Thank you.